Hello everyone, reporting today for First of Duke's Now, I'm Abhas, and with me here today, I have Team 15004, Technologic from Troy, Michigan. They're an all-middle school team who recently won the Design Award at the Michigan State Championship, and I'm really looking forward to taking a deep dive into their intake subsystem and lift, and everything else going on in the robot. All that and more coming up on First of Duke's Now. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. SOLIDWORKS is free for first teams. Over 80% of US engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SOLIDWORKS to design great products. SOLIDWORKS can help you design a great robot on desktop or on the cloud. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first to register your team. Check out our all new FTC content coming to Fund's YouTube in February, including new hosts from the FTC community. We'll have resource guides, top 10 moments, behind the bots interviews, and walkthroughs to help your FTC team improve at youtube.com slash first updates now. Why don't we get started with your drivetrain? I think something that's often overlooked in FTC is like manufacturing and how you can use that uh, coupled with your design to aid like your robot progression throughout the season. So I, I know you guys do something a little special with your drivetrain, so can you give us some insight into that? Yeah, so what we have is water jet uh, cut drivetrain plates, which when put together can create four individual drivetrain pods. One advantage to that is we can just use those four pods for every challenge by moving the distance between them and positioning them so we can get a longer a longer robot if needed or a wider robot. Yeah, and so like with the power play challenge, how did you guys use this specifically to address like the distance between the poles or like the existence of the ground junction and all the other factors on the field? So one thing that the drivetrain plates has is that two different configurations, one for height and one more for uh, if you want it to be a little bit lower. Mm -hmm. So we, to help traverse the ground junctions, we kept it in the position where it's higher. So what this lets us do is just make it easier in case if we do need to go over the direction. Uh, drive over the ground junctions. Now yeah. we have these in a way that it's as small as possible while also giving enough space for the challenge and if we need to fix anything. Yeah, no, that that's very insightful. Thank you. And so going on to your intake, I know I remember seeing like videos of you guys early in the season, maybe like late September, October, early November, just sitting and cycling so quickly onto that high junction after you got set in your early qualifiers. And so walk us through your intake, how you're able to get it so consistent and what it took to get there. So this is our intake system. It's fully 3D printed and um, this is how it works. So over here, this is the inside of it. This would move and it would cause this intake to expand. And once it expanded, that's how it would grip the cone. and if this moves back, then it would release the cone onto the high junction. This way, it worked really consistently and accurately. It's powered by a uh, slim servo that has a capacity of eight kilograms. And uh, it's we chose this by looking at all the different intakes in something called the design matrix. So. We looked at all the intakes and we put down what we needed, like accuracy, consistency, um, control, and we rated them and this turned out to be the best one. So, uh, and is connected to this carbon fiber arm. Yeah, so talking a little bit more about your intake, when you guys developed, like, when you guys developed this gripper, like going from the inside, what's retaining the cone? Like, is it the friction between your piece and the cone, like the inside wall of the cone that's allowing you to hold the cone? Or is it like there's some lip inside of the cone that you guys are stopping like from falling down and that's how you're holding the cone? It's the friction that holds the cone. Okay, and so did you guys like have any issues with like the piece being like too slippery and you had to add like some friction material or anything like that? Or was that just never a concern? That was really never a concern. Fantastic. The only issue uh, mm -hmm. this one was it was going too deep, but we saw that one. Okay. And did you guys ever have like a need to create any sort of like funneling system or anything like that? Or like how did your intake change throughout the season? So we have different driver aids. So this one was actually to guide the cone in because it won't always be so the cone won't always be in the correct position. Mm -hmm. So this is one of our driver aids. Um it all it helps uh, push the cone into position. We also have 
another one at the bottom, which also pushes the cone into place. Yeah, no, that's that's perfect. And so going on to your arm and then on to your lift, you guys mentioned that you have a carbon fiber arm. So how uh, how did you guys make that decision like to go for carbon fiber? I know it's like a little bit more expensive than other traditional materials and also like a very advanced um, material to use in general. So how did that de uh, decision come about? So what ended up happening was in its fully, when the elevator was at its max and we were moving the arm, there'll generally be a lot of, um, what's it called? A lot of shaking from this and the inertia of the arm kind of when it stops, it uh, makes the entire elevator piece shake. Mm -hmm. So what happened was we switched it out from the aluminum extrusions to the carbon fiber tubing. Mm -hmm. This saved around 20 grams along with the change from the normal servo to the slim servo helps overall make the shaking a lot less. Interesting. And are you guys using any sensors in like your whole intake procedure before going onto the lift to automate it or just speed it up or improve consistency? Or was it just like there wasn't really a need for that? We actually, at first, we did have this FSR sensor. It's a force resistance sensor. And it, uh, and it shows if the cone is in the uh, intake system through voltage. Mm -hmm. But it was really hard to wire as a moving part. So we decided not to go through with it. Got it, got it. Yeah, and I mean, you can definitely tell like watching you guys' matches that driver practices played like a super pivotal role in your success uh, and I think sometimes balancing between like spending more time working on the robot and then spending time just practicing is like a really important consideration for a team to make and I think you guys have definitely done that successfully this season so going on to your lift system a what what slides are you using for your elevator how does it work and like what what have you guys done to ensure its consistency this season so um, this is a standard elevator system. It's actually made out of aluminum. So basically to reach the high junction and uh, it goes along with the, since our whole design is strategy based, mm -hmm. was since we decided to have a stationary robot, um, we needed something for reach and we needed something for height. So the elevator is for height and what's for reach is the slider. Yeah, okay. so we're just gonna put um okay and so you guys are using aluminum extrusion for your elevator like is it from a specific company or was it just like from a hardware store where did you guys get it um it it's rev and it okay. is the aluminum extensions yeah okay okay got it and it looks like you guys have some demonstration right now yeah uh Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, so... I see. Yeah. yeah, no, it's definitely very quick. And are you guys using also like the Rev Aluminum Extrusion for your horizontal extension? Or is that uh, like a Misumi drawer slide or some other drawer slide? It's, it's, it's a Go Build a Viper slide. For Go the Build a Viper slider. slide. Got it. Got it. And so, yeah, I think that's really insightful, like into your, in your lift systems. And are those both powered by motors and string or is it some other method? It's, um, yeah, it's powered by motors and strings. Got it. Got it. And so talking briefly about your autonomous, what does it do and how have you ensured consistency throughout the design of your autonomous? This year for Power Play, our team came up with a five cone autonomous that includes parking. And we start off by using our camera in the front of the robot. And what we do here is use the camera to scan our April tags, which we have used this year to scan our signal because we found that April tags were the most efficient because they work basically like QR codes so that in any lighting, it'll still be really easy to use. Mm -hmm. After scanning, our robot moves to a medium junction and from there on out, we use something called threads in our program to make our elevator, slider, and intake system work simultaneously to go to a cone stack nearby and keep dropping off cones, similar to Teleop, where we have a stationary robot. 
yeah that's that's really insightful thank you and so you guys do all six cones on the medium junction what our team does is to use the preload cone and then after dropping that off at a medium junction we stay stationary and then use our mechanism to pick up four or five cones using the cone stack okay and then you score those cones also on the medium junction or the low or the high we stay and score on the medium junction got it yeah that makes a lot of sense and technologic thank you i think this has been a really great interview you guys have given some great insight into your different mechanisms and your autonomous programs and i'm sure people will really learn a lot from this so again reporting for first updates now i'm abhas and with me here is team 15004 technologic thank you everyone thank you thank you, thank you. this video on first updates now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors SOLIDWORKS is free for FIRST teams. Over 80% of U.S. engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SOLIDWORKS to design great products. SOLIDWORKS can help you design a great robot on desktop or on the cloud. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com FIRST to register your team. Check out our all new FTC content coming to Fund's YouTube in February, including new hosts from the FTC community. We'll have resource guides, top 10 moments, behind the bots interviews, and walkthroughs to help your FTC team improve at YouTube.com slash FIRST updates now. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.